May, it's Emma. You have no idea how happy I am to hear you. Emma. Oh my god, Emma, I'm stuck in Shenzhou. Where are you? We've just made it to Central. Who is we? Me and Sam. I don't know where anyone else is yet except... Except Staz. He's dead, May. Oh, God. How? It looks like Central depressurized. It's okay now, though. Uh, he's in his suit, but I, I don't think he had O2. What about Jim? Josh? Ailsa? Nothing yet. We had, like, a full power outage. Sam has lost most of his functions, and we're slowly getting him back up to speed. Okay. I'd like to help, but I'm stuck in the Chinese arm. There's something wrong in UN3. It's all locked down. I'll get Sam to look into it right now. Sam, check the station alerts. Make that the priority if you can. Okay. Uh, we will get to that in a second. Hey, folks. Welcome back to After Work Gaming. We are back for some more observation. Uh, before we go and do anything with station alerts, let's actually go back to the EAS module because there are a couple of things that you guys pointed out. I don't know what... That, that looks like a sphere that just went by us. Uh, first things first, let's go to... Now there are two bodies? What is going on? And he's moving. What is going on? Oh, maybe that's... Maybe that's just, um, Dr. Fisher, and they're just not rendering the, the station, because I'm not looking at it, per se. That's possible. Let's see, can I get a good look at... Yes, I can. So, a, a couple of you pointed out that if you look kind of closely, the text over there says, Bring her. Let's see if I can get a better, uh, look. Uh, definitely not with that camera. Uh, no. Sorry, guys. If I get a sphere, I'll come back here. Alright, so that's the first thing. That document was the one that a couple of you mentioned has, uh, Bring Her written on it. And then... Or in view via station alerts. Oh. Okay, well, I guess I can't go back there. Fine. Very well. I see your game. Let's go back to... there is a... there is a sphere there. Uh, let's go back to Central. And let's... before we get into station alerts, let's connect up to a couple of... systems and monitors, because it looks like there is some information around here for us to read. Guidance and navigation. Nothing for now. Whoa. Oh, so shift is just a free roam... Rotation. Okay, interesting. Life support terminal. Access denied. We'll see about that. 311. Access denied. No biometric data. Okay, well, we'll come back to that. What I did want to see is there's this laptop, and then there's one more in the corridor that I know we saw. So, 224. Whoa, there's a couple. Okay, UN hatch schematics. Technical diagram of the universal hatch door schematic layout. This allows the user to force commands of the equipment in the event of interface failure. Oh, so each module has their own schematics. Kind of makes sense. Okay, so this is the same thing that we used to use. And the big one, the unlock, is that squiggle in the middle. Universal adapter systems are utilized to link modules of EAS, CN, and Roos arms. Okay. Message to Crusoe. from Houston and from me that have been butting into your work this past week. I just wanted to say that I'm hearing you all loud and clear, especially Josh as he's been the loudest. I know it's been frustrating, but we're getting to the end of it now. We'll be back on expected ESA practice soon, really soon. You've just got to trust me. When we get through to the other side, I can maybe fill you in on what's been happening. What has been happening? Okay. Confidential. Decryption protocol local comms EASA static key 1 and encryption key matrix. Notes for use. All standard communications between observation and ground control are automatically hardware encrypted and paired. In the event of a breakdown in hardware or to contact local vessels such as approaching shuttle whose encryption hardware has failed, 
Use this key to reconfigure. Each vessel carries the same key, and as such, station to craft or, or Houston communications should still be possible by decryption with this key, even with hardware failures. Okay. Okay, so those are some utilities we can use. That's helpful. To a degree. Okay. Well, where is the corridor we came out of? Because it's easier. I'm pretty sure we saw one over there. Yeah. Okay. Fly around. There it is. Right, there's the laptop. So... So we were here. Which way is the EAS? This way. And this has a link conduit. Or this is a link conduit. Okay, I get it. And there's stuff tumbling around. I am not comfortable with that. Okay. Let's... No, nothing. If I hit the respond button, is this, I wonder if that's going to highlight all the sort of interactables in the space for me. Nope, not really. Because <laughs> this laptop is clearly something I can interact with. On 3 1. And we're linked, and let's see what it says. Stas and Ailsa, please. Thanks, guys. Don't worry. It's not just your imagination. This isn't gossip, either. We just want what's best for them, and what's least disruptive to observation. I'll go to Jim with Ailsa's sleep station idea. A change of scenery could be nice anyway. Message end. Interesting. I wonder what we were doing before. Uh, before the accident, I mean. Because... Okay, is there another camera? No, it's just the two. Okay. Let's make our way further into UN1. Very bright. Uh, because, you know, whatever Jim had just said... Root tracking sensor. 223. System linked. Currently unavailable. Okay, that's to be expected. Root tracking sensor unavailable. Fine. Uh, because what he was saying, and sort of what May suggested is going on, maybe... Um, doesn't bode super well. You know? Okay, is there a document? No, that's just a storage bag. Got a different camera angle on this. UN7. Link us in, thank you. 223. System length schematic. Well, we're not going to open it quite yet. Maybe we can jump into the cameras up there. To EASA Horizon, nice. Hmm. Yeah, like I was saying, though, it's... It's curious. Sorry, I'm just going to link to everything I can find now. Uh, 424. It's curious, because the what they're saying... More schematics, no, no thank you, not now. Is it makes it sound like they were up to something... Well, not strange, but secret, at least. Something that they weren't necessarily explaining properly to the crew. Okay, so that's us. Now, there's biomedical in UN7. Let's just go ahead and take the look. Gotta be something here. Oh, here we go. So you guys pointed out that when it's something like this... Okay, 111. Let's link, and then... What you do is you go here. And there you go. And that's what I wanted to do in, in EAS10, but we can't get back there quite yet. But we will eventually. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so maybe... Maybe they were doing something weird. 
because it makes it sound a little bit like like maybe Houston got the same sort of transmission that started this whole thing off for us where it says bringer. Oh, hello. What is this document? No, oh, just storage. Fine. Let's see, is there anything else for us to look at, though? That's an environmental sensor. Environmental sensor. There's a document. Biomedical results. Jim Elias. Okay, a medical report on Captain Jim Elias. Showing high levels of cortisol, it is suggested that the captain is under excessive stress. This interpreted above results can accordingly alert to numbers with normal ranges. Results verified by repeat testing. Excessive stress? Question mark? Okay. Well, if he's doing some sort of secret res uh, research that the other members of the crew aren't privy to, or at least aren't super cool ice packs, uh, aren't like 100% knowledgeable about, then I can see how he can be under some stress. Anything? No. Okay. We've got that document, right? Is there anything else for us to look at in here? I'm gonna go with a no for now. Okay, let's jump into UN2. And well, lo and behold, we got another laptop with no power, and we can turn that on in a minute. But let's just take a look real quick. What was this? Patch controls, right, and they need a schematic to open. Because they are locked. What's interesting, so this is kind of interesting, and I don't know if this is just... Yeah, maybe it's a usual way of storing things, but like they bungeed a bunch of stuff up against the door. Doesn't seem like the most obvious thing to do, but then I've never been on a space station, so who knows? Hello. May spacewalk photograph. <laughs> Photographs of May Morgan's first spacewalk pictured alongside Captain Jim Elias. May and Jim first, sp first spacewalk. May 21st, I'm assuming that's 2019. Neat. Is there anything else? Nope. Okay, what else do we have? Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, observation, Earth orbiting station. So if the EFR was on, I'm just thinking of what we just heard in the recording. If the EFR was on standby, that means... Do one, one. That means that they were ready to turn on an alternative source of power because the solar panels may not work. Maybe meaning that they they knew they were going to go to somewhere so far out from the sun that they wouldn't collect enough solar energy. It's possible. Message for Jim. Listen, about these rotations. Every day for the last two weeks, we've been flipping the station back and forth. I've been getting imagery from the coordinates you requested for days now. Sam's hard drive is filling up with pictures of blank space, and Ailsa's too polite to say, but she's pissed the rotations are interfering with her climate work. She needs the scope as much as you do. Or don't. I don't know. There's nothing to look at there, Jim. So why am I looking again and again? <sighs> What's going on, Jim? You asked for me on this mission, and you know someone far less qualified could do this work. So what haven't you told me? What am I looking for? Keep me in the loop, Jim. Message ends. Huh. Yeah, I'm now convinced that they all got the same... Maybe not the same, uh, transmission. Maybe not the bring her transmission, per se. Okay, so she's in UN3, right? We're not going there yet. We're back at Central. Let's go up here. This is where the mainframe is. Access denied. Camera offline. Well, would you look at that. All right, let's go up here, then. Anything worthwhile? Anything worthwhile? Explosive bolts. Two, three, four. Offline, I would hope so. Okay. And the hatch control looks like it's offline, too. One, one, one. System linked. Schematic. UN hatch schematic. Right, right, right. Okay, well, we're not going to do that yet. And it looks like it's completely off, not just not just locked. Okay, show me the other camera. Whoa! That is bright, bright, bright. And it doesn't look like I'm seeing a laptop in here. That's fine. 
Okay, let's move further on. So maybe I was over... Maybe I was overreacting. Maybe the body that I saw floating around that first time last time was they just don't render the other modules, or, you know, my system doesn't reg reg uh, render the modules, and I was just seeing Staz floating in the Universal Hub. It's possible, right? Okay, this is crew tracking sensor. That's what we have in here according to my map. We should connect to that anyway, even if it's not available. I'm sure it'll be useful later. In the meantime, what else do we have? I like how each... I like how... It's a little bit odd, but like every single one of these modules has a very particular color grade to it. Hello. Okay, and this is the crew tracker. Let's just connect to that first. And... two, four, one. Currently unavailable. That's fine. Are there documents here? And a schematic, right? That's the hatch. And are there documents that we can read, maybe? No, but there are two lab... two laptops? No, it looks like only the one. Okay, and then this one runs over here. Let's turn on the power caddy. Thank you, by the way, uh, for everybody who pointed this out. I would not have necessarily gotten this quite quickly on my own. No? Hold on. Oh, I just connected to it, right. Here we go. Jim, please, Sam. Confirming that I'm finally powering down the test cycle on the EFR reactor. I know I've been a pain in the ass about this, Jim, but it's been operational for weeks now, and the check routines have taken up so much of my time. This is time I should have spent on USES tech tests, and they're going to be pissed. What was Houston's problem with my results? I just don't understand why we're checking this over and over. Anyway. Rant over. Reactor is on standby. Ready for anything. Message end. Okay, so there's clearly, again, more and more evidence that some sort of odd test is going on that nobody's quite on board with. At least nobody's quite aware of. Um, hmm. Okay, so that's this room. That's the Kirsch Strait. Interesting. Let's go to five, and then let's double through to the Chinese arm, and then we'll go back to central. A sphere that I can't connect to. It's probably out of power. That's fine. Documents. Man, this place is a mess. Uh, like a complete and total mess. Holy moly. A plushie? A plushie of the station? Oh my god. More of these codes that I can't do anything about. A working laptop this time. Can I get a better angle? Hold on, what is on here anyway? A whole lot of nothing. This is literally just storage. But what is this? We have run a total of... Okay, so this is just a note. Sphere experiment notes. We have run a total of 14 tests. Uh, test runs with the spheres. Running with the spheres on Sam's Pathfind networks around the station. Out of these, all 14 have been successful in reaching their waypoints within a 5mm delta on each axis, which is incredibly impressive, even for Sam. Combining this pathfinding network with object avoidance and spatial awareness is a bit more tricky, however. Without a human pilot, it's not, considered Im it's not considering impacts on mid-module objects, and we've had a few crashes in that regard. Literally. These algorithms don't care about damage to themselves, just pushing forward with objectives. So we need to get a better balance between accuracy and spatial awareness. Some self-diagnostics, too. Finally, the boost system seems to work well, although we've only tested that on remote control and not with Sam. Well, you've tested it now, baby. Given it's only supposed to be used outside and on human control, it's not a big issue. Well, I just used the stuff outside and... Arguably not under human control, unless we're going to be very meta about this. Yeah, that is the plushie. Ah! Okay. Does this laptop... Really, I can't see anything. Okay, hatch control... Well, let's add this hatch control just in case. Because then, when we get a sphere, we can come back here, maybe. Okay, and the schematic is on. I'm a little disappointed I can't connect up eh? remote power control module currently unavailable interesting okay 
So let's make our way through here. Okay, there's a Chinese module. More explosive bolts. I don't know what those are, and I'm connecting to them out of an abundance of caution and fear. System linked and offline. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, that's the max I can turn. And this is off. Like, off, off. Huh. Okay. Toggle waypoint. No. Now this has coolant networks and a crew sensor. Neat. What is that? Coolant network. Nice. One, three, four. Aired. Currently unavailable. Well, shocker. And it's got a schematic to it. Nope. Let's put this crew sensor on. It would also be unavailable, obviously. Two, one, three. Currently unavailable. Yes. Yes, I guessed as much. Okay, more importantly, is there anything for us to read? Yeah, 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 system connections. But what, what can I read? Um, nothing, nothing. Ooh. I need a better angle to see the plug. That's exactly where we're going next. And we have another one of these. Let's add this to the system. 113. Blunt network system linked, probably on offline. Yes, but a schematic. Which means we can bring it off uh, online. But then... First things first. Oh, hello. Coolant network schematic, perfect. Technical diagram of the coolant network schematic found in uh, UNO3. Configuration 1, 2, 3, 4, adapter 531, 186, 726, and 490. If any issues arise, contact ground control. Well, there is an issue. It looks like I'm missing half of it. Okay, fine. Let's turn on the power caddy. 213. System is linked. System is on. And connect. Hey, Sam. Message for Emma. Hey, it's me. Good news is Jim finally pulled me off USES reactor tests as Houston want the EFR on standby tomorrow. So, out of nowhere, the captain gave us a window between shifts, meaning we get to be awake at the same time for once. New restaurant just opened called EAS 12. Food is terrible, but it's got a great view. See you there at 0100? I'd say let's hang out at your bunk, but it's a tight fit, and that woman who sleeps opposite keeps rolling her eyes. See you later, Em. Message ends, Sam. Thanks. Alright, that was kind of cute. And... Aha! So this is the second half of the same coolant network thing, and... Okay, fine. Data combination now available. Um, well, why not? Go to our memory core. And we have to combine the two pieces. Right, corrupted data. Fragments remaining, two. UN hatch schematic. No, that's not what I need. Bullet network schematic. That's one. Bullet network schematic. That's two. Nice. Yeah. It's not great, but it'll do. It'll do in a pinch. Okay, let's get out of that system then, and let's see what else we've got. I think this is all we're gonna see from this angle. Let's go take a look at the last camera. Aha. But that's coolant network itself. Before we do anything, let's just add this to the system. And I'm not gonna power anything on until I finish my tour of all the modules. And I actually do the thing that they asked me to do, which is to check all the alerts. Pretty sure it's going to have something to do with the coolant network, but... Let's not skip ahead too far, yeah? Okay, and all these boxes popped open. Fine. We are here. Let's check UN4, which is, I think, probably just also storage. Laptop, laptop, they're both off. A document that... If I had a sphere, I could read, but I can't. 
And this is storage for like the Chinese module now. No? Okay. Uh, two. Nope. Let's see, is there anything here worth looking at? No? There are a lot of postcards on this wall. England, the world. Okay, fine. Fine, be that way. Uh, let's see the other cameras. There are three of them. Okay, I can connect to that before I do. Vent, currently unavailable. I'm gonna have to go through the vents. Cool. Maybe I'm gonna have to turn on the vents. My immediate reaction is, I'm gonna go through vents. <laughs> I am Sam who has watched one too many Die Hard movies. Okay, fine. Let's connect to the laptop. One, two, two. Enter pin. That's not helpful. Huh. No. I thought maybe, you know. But no, I guess not. Okay. Let's see. Anything, anything at all that would give me an idea of what the pin could be. Landmark research on observation. Dr. Elias Yang heads up an internationally funded global warming research program for the Chinese Climate Initiative. Whilst on board the state-of-the-art low-orbit space station, LOSS, Yang 27 is the first to take the newly, inform newly formed CCI's work to the stars. Yesterday's announcement was the first to detail Chinese crew that will join the crew of the observation. Mission aboard the station, which had connected Shenzhou 12 three weeks ago to the Universal Docking Ring. The initiative, paid for by all contributors to the mission itself, but operated by the CASA, Chinese Aeronautics Space Agency, is a hot topic in the science and political community. As the global temperature increases, looks a uh, uh, temperature increase looks to pass the critical two degrees celsius limit many years ahead of past predictions the world races towards missing its reduction targets dr yang's research on artificial weather manipulation and terraforming concepts led to her selection for the program you get this constantly changing image of earth spinning below it's a view like no other and being able to conduct research from that vantage point is an incredible opportunity Combined with the station's functionality and the mass computing power of SAM, I believe this is one of the best chances we have at pinpointing the fastest and most efficient method of halting climate change worldwide, Yang said. I believe we can make real change. Flying high, bioscientist Ailsa Yang, 27, has completed her landmark research which will shape the way we look at our climate for generations. Right? the Atlas Mountains, Northern Africa, where researchers are seeing dramatic changes in rock formations and positions and an increased temperature having impacts on flora and fauna. Interesting. That does not answer my question of where the heck I can find the code. <laughs> um, it's gotta be in here, right? Maybe it's in the Chinese arm. That is also quite possible. No, I'm just going to look all the way around with these cameras. Because I do not trust this camera. Where these cameras are. Yeah, I got the environmental sensor up here. No. No, sorry to put you guys through this. I'm just curious. Okay, there's nothing on there. 2491. Well, there you go. Do, 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 two, four, nine, one. Bam. Message for home, Sam. Hey, it's me. Still up here. Still counting down the days till I see you again. It's all been amazing, and everyone's so nice. But this equipment barely needs me to be here. I don't know why they sent me. I could almost be at home with you. Sorry. Sorry. I'm just having a crappy day. 
I will try to swap shifts to speak to you in real time tomorrow. Okie dokie. Okay, so... That is our tour of the modules. Let's head back to Central. Okay, there's the dock. There's the body. Okay, it has actually been a pretty long time for us to look at all this stuff, so I think for this episode, we will put a pin in it, and we will come back, and we will pick up exactly where we left off, which is we will actually do what they want us to do, and that is to check all the high, uh, yeah, the high priority station alerts. And we'll go from there, and we'll try and get May, I guess, into this Universal Hub? Or at least into this place, because I think she said that she was trapped in the Chinese station. Okay, so if you guys enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, lets me know that I'm doing something right, lets me know that you guys want to see more of this stuff. If you have thoughts about this game, if you think that I'm missing things, or you want me to play in a particularly different way, by all means, leave a comment, and in any case, I'll see you all next time.